Welcome back. You're listening to a special edition of Home Wizards uh, on this eve of Halloween. You got to do it. Cindy Doyle here, and I just love talking about ghosts. I've never seen a ghost, and I'm wanting to see a ghost. Here, come on, ghost, have at me. <laughs> but they haven't come yet. But I'm talking with some folks who managed to see them and experience them uh, quite frequently. Barry Conrad, who has done documenting and the unexplained for TV, uh, and is a Victoria Gross partner who has done a lot of. Well, you are a paranormal uh, clairvoyant, and you and you seek out in these investigations the normal and the paranormal, and of course. We also have Michael Corey, who's written how many books? 46 books, <laughs> which is also a huge story. Uh, psychic, medium, paranormal, psychological investigator. And, and you, uh, you all have such glowing smiles on your faces. That's why I love hanging out with you guys. What is it about you folks? You just have a good heart. Well, we love what we do. I yeah. think I can say that for the three of us. We were talking about that on the break. And we're lucky in California. We're such a large state. And we seem to have a lot more haunted places here than many other states in the country. I mean, mm. I'm sure the East Coast has a lot more, too. Wouldn't you guys agree? Oh, yeah. 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 But, um, yeah. But in California, I mean, most of my books are pretty localized. I haven't really stepped out yet to do you a national book, but yeah. I will. It's coming. Well, let's, uh, we, we want to get to the, the haunted sure. Hollywood books that you have, too. But first, let's go to the phones to Santa Ana. Steve's been so patient. Hey, Steve, is something scary going on, or was it just in your childhood you thought you saw something? Are uh, you talking to me, right? I'm talking to you. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, I'm just, uh, you know, still amazed about it. Uh, it happened about 30 years ago. We was up visiting my uncle up in Yuba City, California, and uh, we got like three, four families to go have a barbecue at a lake. And, uh, you know, while they're making barbecue, we're fishing, and maybe about seven, 800 yards in the middle of the lake, there's a little island, and there's two ladies dressed in black with, you know, uh, lace over their face and all that. You can see that. And uh, they're catching fish one after another. So we're hollering, hey, what are you using for bait? Help <laughs> us. What are you using? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what do you make of that, Barry? Well, I don't know. Uh, now, are you saying, Steve, that... The the ladies are out in a boat. I didn't quite catch that. Were they, were they in a boat or are they on the land? They were uh, fishing on uh, on the island in the middle of the lake. Oh, an island. And in the where was lake. this lake? And then where was the lake, know, Steve? Uh, Yuba, Yuba City. Later, oh. they're on the other side of the lake, uh, not on the island. Okay. So we told their parents, and they came over, and they seen it, and we rushed out of there. So you know, here, so here's the question. Here he is, an adult, and he thought he saw something as a child, and he still wonders as an adult if he saw something. So Barry and Victoria and Michael, what do you say to adults who may have seen something? They were psychic as a child, or they were more sensitive as a child, but now growing up, they've somehow lost that. They've forgotten it, or maybe they're taught that it, you know, you're crazy or you shouldn't think that way. I yeah. think it goes along with what you were saying before the break mm -hmm. that you know, as adults, we're not supposed to believe this. But for those of us who are raised under a religious uh, uh, belief. Most religions don't acknowledge ghosts. They acknowledge them as being evil, but that's really not true. Most spirits are not evil. They're doing the things they did when they were alive. Like in Steve's uh, experience, those women might have been in mourning. Maybe they had lost mm -hmm. their husbands. That's why they were wearing black. It's very common for people in the old days to wear black and wear veils. Um, and they they might have been very good fisherwomen. So he might have seen them doing something that was repetitive from when they were alive on the Earth plane. What do you guys think? Yeah, that's interesting. They were wearing black. Uh, black veils, is that what you saw, Steve? Yeah. Can I finish, please? Now we yes, got sir. out of there. On the way out, we seen a ranger, and my parents asked him, look, we're getting out of here because we're scared. We've seen some ladies fishing, and then they weren't there. And he said, you know what? A lot of people seen them before. They oh. died. Uh, into the middle of the island, they drowned in a boat, and that's why people see them all the time. Uh -huh. and I swear on anything in my life. <laughs> that's the first you thing know, that I would. That's happened. the first thing I would look into is the past. You know, going back in the historical records or talking to some older people in the area to find out what the history of that lake is. And <laughs> uh, more often than not, not always, but more often than not, ghosts. The ghost syndrome springs upon, springs up from. Uh, a tragic uh, or traumatic death. And so uh, there's a good chance that these ladies did drown there, or maybe a good friend of theirs uh, died there years ago. And so is that why if we have a relative that we are longing to have <laughs> them come and visit us, if their death wasn't tragic, they're, not, they're, they're happier in a better place, they're not going to come back and say hi? 
Is right. that what you're saying? I think so. I think so. I think that, well, you know, there's, there's, there's any number of reasons why ghosts come back. It may be also, it could be uh, what they call residual haunting, where ghosts tend to repeat something that they did in life. Uh, they will, it's like a, a, a needle of a record player that's stuck in a groove. Also, it's called stone tape theory, where things came to repeat themselves. And they're not always aware of their surroundings. They don't seem to always be aware of living persons around them. But it's sort of like just sort of an incident in time that keeps playing itself back. I think, Michael, you've had a few cases like that, too. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. But it's hard to say who or what these ghosts are. But without really investigating the history of the Mm -hmm. place, it'd be hard to hard to judge that. You're listening to a special edition of Home Wizards. Uh, Is your home haunted? Have you seen something spooky in a previous home? You can call on in as we're talking with uh, these great experts who uh, live and breathe Halloween every day because it isn't just a Halloween thing. It's just, you know, we traditionally think of ghosts more on Halloween. But 888-KFWB980 is the number you're invited to join on in. 888-539-2980. So as a a clairvoyant uh, Victoria, then would you say that ghosts are basically people who who need to be freed to move on in their journey? No, not always. Uh, I think there's different reasons why ghosts are here, and not every ghost is stuck. You know, a lot of times when people cross over, they can come back. Uh, so I don't think that every it's, it, every ghost is a different situation. So I don't really think we can put a, a label on, say, just because they're here, they're stuck, and they need to be crossed over. I, I, I don't think that's the way it, it goes at all. Uh, what do you think on, on that, Michael? I, mean, I, I love that answer. There's really no storybook explanation yeah. because each case history is a little bit different. There are, sim- there are similarities. Of course, right. But I find that the cases are always different. But in that call, it's a very interesting story he had there, and and many people had seen those same women, mm-hmm. probably dressed the same. So I would go out there and interview people, but only after I had done a paranormal investigation. As a medium, I mean, I could just close my eyes and go to a site. And the spirits often know I'm psychic and I can communicate with them. They know my name. Do you ever have that happen? Well, yeah. You go to a place, they know who we are, and they're like, oh, my God, can you talk to me? Can you actually see me? Sometimes the spirits seem to be afraid of humans. It's like they try to make contact with humans, but humans are so scared, like Casper the Friendly Ghost is along those lines. (laughs) They, They won't make contact. They'll just run away. But I'm not like that. I'll dive in and try to speak to them immediately. And I like to try to help them make peace with the memory of their life and of their death or whatever took place in their life to hold them earthbound so that they can release and move on to wherever it is we go after we die. So for those of us who've said some or or have sensed something that might make you feel scary when you're all alone and you're in bed and you think, I'll just put the covers over my head and I'll be okay, is one of the steps to just be respectful and then you know you will be okay? Sure. Yeah, yeah, you know, you, you you brought up a good word, respect. Um, I had mentioned this earlier with Victoria and I were talking about it, is that when I go out an investigation, I, I like to ask the spirit, uh, you know, will you give me permission to show yourself? Mm-hmm. A lot of researchers go out and they get really demanding. They start yelling and screaming. They start and taking pictures of the paparazzi, right? Yeah, you know? right. like the paparazzi. I mean, I would hide if yes. somebody was yelling at me to show them, you know, yeah, show sure. yourself. Yeah, I'd hide, yes. like you were saying. Barry. I was, yeah. I was in a, I was in a very spooky hotel called the Crescent Hotel a few months ago, on an investigation, and I was in the basement of that hotel. And it used to be a morgue, because back in the 1930s there was a fellow by the name of Norman Baker to set up a, a, a kind of a phony cancer clinic. I mean, he was, I think he sincerely wanted to be able to find a cure for cancer, but uh, he was telling people that he had a cure for cancer. Mm-hmm. So people, he was, people would die. And he was bilking people for oh, money. And snake oil kind like, of a guy. Sort of a snake oh, oil doctor, uh-huh. exactly. And he was performing autopsies when these people oh, died no. in the basement of the Crescent Hotel. When I went into the uh, Crescent Hotel, I picked up uh, in that in that morgue area. I picked up a, a bullet of light, saw it shoot by the camera. I asked one of the night managers if I could go back into the morgue uh, at late at night, like after midnight, to investigate. So it was just uh, myself. A friend of mine and uh, one of the, the night manager himself went down there. I asked permission politely. If you if you're here, please give us a sign. I went back and did rap three times on a on a door because sometimes, as Michael knows and Victoria knows, they will rap back. Mm-hmm. I thought maybe something like that would happen. Well, let's go to the phones because there's another story oh, sure. that might be kind of sure. spooky that we can help. A uh, Ken is calling in, and Ken, thanks for uh, for having the courage to call in. Uh, it sounds like you were basically working at a haunted house. Is that what it was? Or w- tell us your story. Yeah, um, I uh, did uh, haunted houses for the kids in the neighborhood um, uh, years ago, and um, 
we were taking pictures after the kids had stopped coming um, and were done trick-or-treating. At about uh, 11 o'clock, I was going around the backyard. We had underground fog, and we made it look like a cemetery in our backyard, and our theme was uh, Defenders of the Planet. Um, I took some pictures, and about uh, about 30 pictures or so into, into my session, um, a little wind picked up, and I took a picture in, of a ghost that the kids had made, and um, it turned with the wind and um i kept taking pictures and I, I asked my assistant i said you know what time is it It was kind of weird that it actually sprinkled a little tiny bit right before i took the picture and the wind had just a little breeze it was calm pretty much the whole night um and so about a week and a half later when i got my pictures back here's this um it looked like um uh, a defender of the planet this guy or this the, the 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 image in this ghost everything was blurry except the face, and there was eyes and a nose and like a, a, an old mid-14th uh, century battle helmet. Um, and uh, it's just, you know, it was it was incredible. It, like I say, the, the ghost was all blurry from the wind blowing it, but the face was crystal clear. What do you make of that, Barry? I know that you've done some uh, some video shoots of battlefields and such, right? Yeah, yeah. Are, are that you, are haunted. Are, are you saying that this was a battlefield? I didn't quite catch that. Were you, was this a battlefield, near a battlefield? No, it was um, what our theme was: defenders of the planet. We're, we're our kids' club, where we were into recycling and, and water conservation. So we had a big banner on the front of our our garage, the whole backyard, and the garage and the treehouse where the ghost was hanging. Um, were, was all um, the the uh, the theme was defenders of the planet. I got you. But where was that? What what state are you calling from? Oh, it's in, in California. Yeah. Santa okay. Ana. Oh, Santa Ana. Okay. Well, you know, Actually, it was in Lakewood, California. Oh, okay. Well, well you could know, have been the Mexican yeah. American War. You yeah, know, could have been people from that generation. Could too. have been something like that. Also, too, um, uh, you know, where we find ghosts, where there's been traumatic history. It's also possible. It could be a thought form. It could be a thought form projected. That's true. Psycho, psychically into the into the uh, auric field, or even to call it, and your camera picked that up because that's what you guys were concentrating on. You're focusing your energy in that direction. I don't think that all ghosts are necessarily have to be spirits of the dead. Of course, some of them I believe definitely are, but uh, it could be a something in the psyche that's projected mm-hmm. psycho. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm working on a study right now about people that have Alzheimer's who seem to travel in and out of consciousness. And that goes along with what Barry's saying, too. That'll be a book eventually. But a lot of people that have Alzheimer's, they during sleep period, they travel and they go to other places. And I've already interviewed 1,400 cases of people who have seen their loved ones in their home or at a, at a, a family picnic that the family member always went to but couldn't because they're now in a, a board and care. Mm-hmm. But they'll, they'll physically appear. They can't always speak. And then they'll disappear, and they'll, the families will call the board and care, and, oh, no, your, your mother's fine. She's sleeping. But yet she was there, and everybody would have seen her. It's very, very interesting when that happened. And she's still alive. Exactly. Well, when we come back, uh, we're going to continue this great discussion, and we have another guest who's going to be joining us, uh, Dale Kazmarek, who is a ghost investigator uh, who has worked all over the country. But his, his outfit's called the Ghost Research Society uh, in Illinois. And his mission is to prove that, yes, ghosts do exist, and there is life after death. And maybe something spooky that's going on in your home, you have a question, you can call in and get some answers. Thanks to you guys who have called in so far. The number is 888-KFWB980, 888-539-2980, a special haunted home wizards for the whole two hours. We're back after this.